remember that film I made about one camera, one lens? I lied. Twenty-seven million Americans identify as birders. If you throw in bird watchers and the mildly curious, that number easily stretches past the 50 million mark. Where do I fit in? Well, my interest in birds is relatively new, which means I can barely tell the difference between a wagtail and a Winnebago. But yet here I am along the south shore of Lake Erie for the biggest week in American birding. Spring migration is one of the truly astounding events on the resume of Mother Nature. Hundreds of millions of birds on their annual trek to their summer grounds. A conflux of weather, season, and ritual. One popular flyway crosses this very stretch of land, but when the birds arrive at the south shore of the massive lake, they have a difficult decision to make. Should I stay or should I go? Depending on the weather, food supply, and a myriad of other factors, the birds must decide if they have the juice to battle the girth of the lake. When in doubt, the birds land on the south shore to refuel and rejuvenate. And for birders, this means game on. The top species in question is not the glorious bald eagle, made famous by the truck stop t-shirt. Oh no, this symbol of American might is reduced to the glam of an 80s cover band. When it comes to the biggest week, the bell of the ball is the warbler, a minute, frenetic little creature that comes in more than 30 flavors, some of which are incredibly rare. Tennessee, Nashville, Canada, Connecticut, Kentucky, Yellow, the Cape May, Black-throated Blue, and the Blackburnian, to name just a few. Often hidden in dense foliage and covering a range from ground level to 60 feet high in the canopy, these elusive birds bring birders from around the globe hoping to add to their life list. Birders are often ridiculed by the non-birding population. Their synthetic travel outfits, odd hats, howitzer-style lenses, and ever-present binoculars are easy targets. But my experience with birders has changed my opinion of this diverse lot. Yes, the average age is that middle distance of 40 to 60, but birding is an inclusive pursuit, and I'm continually surprised by the age range and diversity of those around me. I've seen a 12-year-old with a 600mm lens, and even saw a hardcore birder in a Metallica t-shirt. I heard German, Japanese, Spanish, and French as I made my way around the McGee Marsh boardwalk. Blue, pink, and purple human hair colors match the exotic plumage of the birds we were searching for. After my brief time around the birding community, I can say with authority they are the most educated, driven, focused, and competitive at times subculture I've ever met. Many can identify birds by sound alone. And thankfully for me, they are more than willing to help. Without the assistance of my fellow birders, I would have never been able to complete my mission of better understanding this place and these remarkable creatures passing through on the way to their summer homes. Birding is free and open to anyone. And to get started, you simply have to look up. Binoculars and a guidebook are often the next phases. Numerous apps are also available for assistance with identification as well as bird song and calls. And yes, for people like me, there's no shortage of camera gear designed for those with bird-centric minds. Although the experience is overwhelmingly thrilling, yes, thrilling, being here is also a humbling moment. Two-thirds of North American species are at risk of extinction, and after I was feeling good about myself for photographing a semi-rare warbler in dense foliage, I overheard, quote, that bird will be extinct in our lifetime, unquote. One of the most alluring aspects of the biggest week in American birding is that no matter what I do, I can never fully exhaust what the avian world has to offer. With over 10,000 species worldwide, no matter where I go, what I do, or how much I learn, there is always something new calling out or flashing by. My job is to simply pay attention.